The Samyang 35mm f1.8 is a super compact prime lens with a big cult following. But is this affordable prime better than the much loved Sony 35mm f1.8? Well today we're going to find out. In terms of size and weight, both of these lenses are incredibly small and lightweight, making them ideal options for photographers and videographers who like to travel light. Both lenses are predominantly made from metal and include a dust and weather sealed construction, though when it comes to manual controls, these lenses are quite different. The Sony opts for an MF to AF switch and a customizable AF lock button, whilst the Samyang features just a custom switch. In mode 1, the lens operates as expected, but in mode 2, the focus dial now operates as a manual aperture dial instead. In terms of price, the Samyang is noticeably cheaper cheaper than the Sony, particularly in the US where it's less than half the price of its competitor. So needless to say, this means that the Samyang picks up an early point for price in this competition. In terms of build quality, it's kind of hard to explain, but the Sony does feel slightly more solid in the hand when compared to the Samyang. Now maybe this is something to do with the fact that the Sony is just that little bit heavier, so it feels, I don't know, a bit more solid in the hand. But in either case, I'm not going to be that tough on the Samyang here, because in all honesty, both lenses are very nicely put together, so they both deserve a point apiece for build. I'm also going to award both of these lenses a point for handling too because they both feel really nice to shoot with when mounted on my Sony a7 Mark III, mainly to do with the fact that they're just so small and lightweight. When it comes to autofocus in good lighting conditions, both lenses are quick and accurate to focus with no signs of hunting. In low light conditions, both lenses slowed ever so slightly, but ultimately they were both more than capable of finding focus in extremely low light conditions. When shooting a moving target at f1.8 in continuous burst mode, both lenses managed to get the overwhelming majority of the photos pin sharp and in focus. So with a pretty flawless performance from both of these lenses, they both pick up a point in this round. When shooting a moving target in video mode at f1.8, both lenses managed to keep locked onto George as he walked towards the camera at a regular pace. When repeating the test but this time at a faster pace, the Sony lens managed to keep locked onto the target without any issues at all. The Samyang also did a pretty good job, though occasionally it would just lose track halfway through the walk ever so slightly. However, the good news is that by the end of the walk, it did very quickly lock back onto George, so it wasn't a total disaster. As for AF noise, both of these lenses are incredibly quiet. When focusing manually with these lenses, both of them offer a pleasing amount of resistance and a responsive control. The Sony has a slightly larger dial, which makes it a bit less fiddly to control. As for focus breathing, the Sony has barely anything to show, whilst unfortunately the Samyang has a noticeable amount of focus breathing, which might be a slight turnoff for videographers. But this aside, I think both lenses put a good enough performance in this round to earn themselves a point. In our Bokeballs test, when examining the shape of the orbs, the results are very similar, with both lenses offering nice round balls in the center that turn into cat's eye shapes at the edges of the frame. However, the key difference is that the Samyang has an onion ring effect to its orbs, which is pretty distracting, whilst the Sony doesn't have this issue at all. In terms of general bokeh quality, when we take a closer look, we can see that the Sony does offer marginally softer bokeh when compared to the Samyang, but there's really not a huge amount in it, and you definitely wouldn't be disappointed with the Samyang's results. But either way, the Sony clearly is the better option when it comes to both bokeh quality and bokeh balls, so it has to pick up the point in this round. In our lens flare test, both lenses do an okay job of preventing ghosting and artifacting, though you'll probably Probably want to take advantage of the lens hoods that are included in the box should you want to avoid lens flare altogether. On a longitudinal chromatic aberration test, both lenses suffer from teal fringing above the plane of sharp focus and a red or kind of amber fringing at the bottom. Though it's got to be said, the Samyang certainly produces the more colourful results of the two. Luckily though, when shooting out in the real world, both of these lenses are an absolute joy to use. They're both super small, lightweight, and you can just easily throw them in your camera bag and not have to worry about lugging around additional weight. On the front of my Sony a7 Mark III, both of these lenses feel very nicely balanced, though the Samyang is just so lightweight that it actually makes the camera feel slightly back heavy, which isn't always a bad thing. Both lenses operated flawlessly during my time shooting with them, and it really was hard to pick any kind of fault with either of these options. As you can see from these example images, both of these lenses are more than capable of capturing stunning looking portraits. So that means if we want to find out which of 
these options is actually the best when it comes down to image quality, we're going to have to dive a little bit deeper. When shooting at f1.8, at the center, both lenses are on par in terms of sharpness and contrast, despite the Samyang displaying a touch of colored fringing. At the corners, the Sony is definitely the sharper option, and it doesn't have that colored fringing issue that the Samyang displays. The Sony has the benefit of being able to focus slightly closer than the Samyang, and it's also the sharper option when it comes to shooting wide open at this distance too. So when scoring for image quality, for me, the Sony is the strongest contender and deserves the final winning point. This means that the Sony takes the victory in this head-to-head -head test, however, I still think the Samyang is a fantastic option to consider, especially if your budget can't quite stretch to the $748 that's required for the Sony. But which of these two options would you buy? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.